All right, so uh, I guess we'll start with the most awaited uh, word of the day. So the word of the day is a word that we'll mention uh, at, uh, during the session. Um, so it, it, it's probably towards the, uh, like once you are done at least half of the day, uh, we'll be mentioning the word of the day. And the word of the day is what you have to uh, mention uh, under the attendance for that given day. So let me start with uh, the word of the day. And the word of the day is Covishield. So this Covishield is a vaccine that is widely used in most, uh, most countries in the uh, South and Southeast Asia. So most of you must be familiar with, the, with this uh, vaccine brand. It's a COVID vaccine. So what you have to do is you have to type in this word exactly the same. So don't, uh, I mean, like you have to use all caps because uh, the, the word of the day is case sensitive. So just type in this word, Covishield, uh, in the input box under the attendance for day one. And then just complete. So please make sure after type in this, uh, you also have to click on submit, right? Uh, just saving is not enough. You have to submit it. Then only your attendance will be counted. We will also mention this uh, word in the chat and the Slack. All right. All right. So our final session for the day is about uh, tracker terminology and tracker data model. Now, this uh, is a kind of a theoretical session that we'll be doing uh, in this entire training program. Like, uh, so this is, this tends to be boring when it is uh, theoretical, but uh, it can't help it because you need this theory about how tracker is constructed, how tracker is designed so that you can start customizing it. But what I will try to do is to make it as interactive as possible. So you are always, uh, you can feel free to ask questions in the chat. I will, uh, I will keep uh, my chat uh, open so that I'll be able to uh, comment. And also like, uh, I, I, I tend to ask some questions also during the session. So uh, please feel, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and answer. So let's try to keep this as interactive as possible. Right. So the learning objectives for this session is to uh, understand what a tracker data model is and uh, how it is uh, related to the DHS2 tracker and to define the common terms used within the DHS2 tracker data model to describe the general flow of information used within the DHS2 tracker data model and to understand how the components of the DHIS2 tracker data model links together. So these are the objectives that we are trying to cover in this session. Right, so what is tracker data model? Now basically tracker or DHIS2 data model uh, in general is the fixed part of DHIS2 that you cannot change, right? So basically it's like, uh, like just imagine of a building where you are kind of renting out some uh, stores or shops, right? So the building structure, you cannot change it. Although like you can think of having different types of shops, like you may have grocery shops, you may have electronic shops, you can have different types of shops, but the thing is this building structure remains the same. So similarly in uh, DHIS2, the data model is something that you can't change it, but what you can do, DHIS2 being so generic, is that you can adapt uh, the DHS2 data model and try to build on uh, and customize the DHS2 to, to suit your uh, workflow. That's what you should try to do. And this includes the required structures and objects that define how we can set up metadata and store our data. So probably you have an idea about what is metadata and what is data, right? So uh, if I ask, well, what do you mean by metadata, anyone? You can please unmute yourself and answer. What are the differences? I mean, what do you understand? Uh, what's the difference between metadata and data? Okay, I'm uh, seeing an answer in the chat by Amit. 
it's data about data yes that's correct so but like if you don't still understand what we mean by data about data is metadata is kind of the structure uh, or, 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 or the uh, you can uh, repeat uh, you can kind of refer to it as a schema based on we can input data so for example in dhis2 the data elements organization units indicators programs and the i mean are the metadata of dhis2 but we can customize it in such a way so that we can collect uh, patient information or else in aggregate model uh, information related to our clinic visits so all the all these are particular data that we are collecting in DHS2 instance based on the metadata we have designed. So uh, as the designers or as the implementers of DHS2 in a country or organizational setting, what we do is we will be setting up the metadata, and our data entry users they'll be entering the data into the system. So that's the kind of difference between metadata and data in a very simple simple way. Okay. So uh, now when it comes to tracker, now mind you, I'm, I'm kind of uh, uh, referring to this entire presentation and the concepts that, that we'll be discussing here with the assumption that you are familiar with the aggregate data model, probably the uh, events of DHIS2. Okay. And there are certain metadata concepts that we are using in tracker data model, right? And based on that, we can structure the tracker data. So what we have highlighted here are some concepts that we'll be using in the tracker data model, which we can divide into two broad categories. So the first uh, section or first broad category includes the concepts that we use to identify what we are tracking. Okay, so for example, we have three terms uh, called tracked entity, tracked entity attributes, and tracked entity instance. So these refer to what we are tracking. So in simple terms, what do we mean by track? So that means like we kind of uh, register something and we keep on following up that uh, person or commodity. Right? So that's what we mean by tracking. So whatever related to what we track, who we track, is what we include in this first section as tracked entity, tracked entity attributes, and tracked entity instances. And in the next section, we have some concepts which describes the information we are collecting about the concept we are tracking. So let's take, uh, for an example, we have a person, right? So for the person or patient, uh, whatever the properties, right, uh, related to that pa person or patient is included in the first section. And in the second section, it's kind of collecting. I mean, it, it includes the information about what we are collecting about that patient. Say, for example, we have a patient named John, and this uh, uh, the patient John is undergoing some uh, malaria treatment or TB treatment. And like what he receives in the hospital, what type of medicine, what samples, what tests were done, that information is what we are collecting under this second section. Okay, that's the kind of example uh, that we can use to, to uh, distinguish between the broadly uh, between these two sections. So let's uh, go into more detail about uh, each of these uh, metadata objects. So. First of all, uh, uh, let's start with the first category, which includes tracked entity attributes, tracked entities, and tracked entity instances. So let's start with the second one, right? The tracked entity. So basically, what we mean by tracked entity, here it is a type of concept that is being tracked. Okay? It's a very abstract or very generic concept. So basically, it means what we are tracking generically. So this could be a person, a case, a laboratory sample, a village, a hospital, I mean, a health institute, whatever, right? It's based on our imagination and based on our, uh, uh, the use case that we are using the DHS2 for, we can think of what we are going to track, okay? 
So probably like uh, most of the in most of the use cases, so like probably when you think of DHS to tracker, you may always think of tracking patients, right? You may think of like we are using DHS to tracker to register patients, and then we'll be able to collect some information uh, uh, in different health programs, right? That's a kind of commonest use case. But the D DHS to data model supports to track any concept. So for example, we can use DHS to tracker to track a commodity, such as like a lab sample. Okay. Or else, like if we want to track a case, even for that, we can use DHS2. So it's a very generic thing. So what we mean by tracked entity is what is being tracked. Right. And then what do we mean by the first concept that is mentioned here? Tracked entity attributes. So tracked entity attributes, what it means are the properties of what we are tracking. Okay. So for example, if we have a tracked entity called person, then what are the inherent properties of that person? Right? So for example, a person may have a unique national identity in your country. You may or you may not have. So if you have a, a, a kind of a, a national identity, you can use it as an attribute or as, 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 as its property or probably things that uh, do not change and which it's kind of part of that person. Say for example, the gender, the name, date of birth, phone number, right? So these are, these kind of tend to be permanent or semi-permanent, right? Which, which doesn't usually change. And it tends to be a part of that person or, or kind of a property of that person, right? So this is, these are the stuff that we mean by the track entity attributes or attributes of the track entity. And what do we mean by tracked entity instance? So basically tracked entity instance refers to a single tracked entity that has been registered in the system. So what is the difference between a tracked entity which we have mentioned before and this new term tracked entity instance? So tracked entity is a very abstract concept, meaning it is very generic. It could be, a, I mean like, so for example, tracked entity type or tracked entity could be a person. So a single instance of this person is what we refer to as tracked entity instance. So for example, we have a tracked entity called person and a single person whose name is John will be a tracked entity instance, right? So under the tracked entity type, person, we will be having so many track entity instances that we are registering in the, in the system. So for example, we will have a track entity instance called John, we will have a track entity instance called Peter, we will have a track entity instance called Anne, right? So that way we can keep on adding persons and each of these individuals are referred to as track entity instances. Is that clear? Any questions up to this point? Because I mean, we really need to get these concepts clear so that you can do wonders with the HISU track. Any questions up to this point? About track entity, track entity type or track entity, track entity attributes or track entity instances? I hope not. Okay, let's move forward. Right. Next. Let us look at some tracker program related terminologies. So it's like this. Now, uh, I know like some of you may find uh, it a bit confusing when I'm uh, going through these definitions, but don't be scared. Uh, towards the latter part of this presentation, we will have some pictorial uh, descriptions about uh, each of these uh, terminology and how they are linked together. And we will also do another example so that it will be very much clear to you. Okay, right. So now we have mentioned, we have some thing called tracked entity, which has its own tracked entity attributes, right? So we have kind of say, for example, uh, let's take an example of a person, right? So if we have this tracked entity instance called John in a country A, right? In this country, in the health department of that country, they may be conducting multiple programs, health programs. So for each of these programs, now basically what we mean by a program is like uh, it, it has its own workflow. 
right? So for example, you all, are, you all may be familiar if you are from the health domain, you may have uh, antenatal clinic program, right? Or else you may have nutrition programs, you may have malaria program. So each of these health programs, I'm not talking about DHS2, I'm talking in your health system. You may, having, you, you may be having this health program and they may be having their own workflows. Right? So, for example, if you take a TB uh, control program in the first encounter, you will be registering a person. Then there will be follow-up visits where you may be taking samples. right? And then finally, once that patient is uh, identified as cured, uh, you will have a final outcome. And then you, you may no longer need to uh, continue monitoring that person. Right? So, for example, when we are, uh, so similarly, when we are applying that uh, when we are trying to uh, kind of use DHIS2 to match the information flow of your health program, we use the DHIS2 tracker, okay? So there, if we consider the health program, I mean, if we have a, a TB monitoring health program in DHIS2, there are a few terminologies that come with that health program, okay? So three common terminologies that come with that are the incident date, enrollment date, and the concept of enrollment. Okay. So let's start with the last one, the enrollment. Okay. So what do we mean by enrollment? We have the track entity or uh, who has its own track entity attributes. So for example, a track entity instance would be the person John. And, and on the other side, we have something called TB control program, or else uh, with our example here, COVID surveillance program, right? So this program is something which, will, which I will come, uh, come, come back to it a bit later. A program is a kind of a workflow that we create in, in our tracker in DHIS2, right? So we have the program and we have the person, the track entity and the linkage between the program and the track entity is called the enrollment. So basically, when we have a track entity instance, we have to enroll that track entity instance to a program in DHIS2, right? So the process of taking a track entity and registering them into a program is called enrollment. I hope that is clear, but we will uh, come back to it with few examples. And when you are doing this enrollment, of a track entity into a DHS2 program, this happens in a particular date, right? So this date is referred to as enrollment date. So basically the date the entity is enrolled into the program is called the enrollment date. For example, the date of the COVID-19 patient visits the clinic and receives their initial diagnosis or assessment could be used as the enrollment date. Okay, that's the first encounter of that person with the health program. And then we also have another concept called incident date. So the incident date is the date which triggers the first event. For example, in the COVID uh, scenario, it could be the date of onset of COVID-19 symptoms. So let me ask a question, uh, an open question from um, all of you. I mean, what is the difference? Why do we need to have two different dates for enrollment date and incident date? Could this be same or these basically refer to a uh, two, I mean, two different concepts? What's the difference between an incident date and enrollment date? You can even ex uh, explain with an example. Any of you? Okay, I'm seeing an answer from Amit. Everyone agrees. He, he mentions it in the chat. He says, incident can be Yes, Ibrahim, you want to answer? Yeah, uh, the, the incident that uh, the, the date, of, they're the same. The incident, the date of the, the, the sickness starts, the, the, then the onset is that uh, the symptoms that uh, appear in the body. Yeah, exactly. So it's like this. So for example, in, as I mentioned to you, now let's take this example of COVID-19 surveillance program. Right. So in the COVID-19 surveillance program, the surveillance program is, is run by the health ministry or like your health sector. So they get to know that you have this 
person John who has some COVID related issue. They don't know whether he's COVID positive or not. Only when that John, the person John visits the health facility and presents him to the health sector, right? So that is where the interaction or the first encounter between the person, the track entity John and the health program, COVID surveillance program happens. So that's when we usually enroll John to the COVID, uh, COVID surveillance program, right? So that is, that is where we have the enrollment date. But why John has to come and present himself to the health is because he believes that he has uh, COVID related symptoms or probably he may have even got a test done and he knows that he's positive, right? So basically what triggered his visit was he being presented with some symptoms that may probably be due to COVID. So basically what we mean by incident date is in this case, in this example, it could be that uh, the date he first got to know of his COVID related symptoms. Okay, so that is the kind of uh, basic difference between the between an incident date and an enrollment date. And mind you, tracker is very generic. So you don't actually have to use both these date uh, in, in each of these health programs. Sometimes you may not be able to have a clear, clearly different incident date, right? But we will come back to this uh, uh, different use cases later. But I just wanted to mention you what, did, I mean, like, what are these two dates and um, at conceptual level, what are the differences? Okay, let's move on. Right, so what we can do is we can uh, now log into the instance. So I will do it for you. You don't actually have to do it now. I will log into our demo instance and try to explain to you um, these concepts in a real, uh, real life scenario using our COVID surveillance program. Let me share. Okay, now I'm in our demo instance, which is links.spindia.org slash demo one. So what I will try to do is the, the default program that we are using to track, uh, to capture tracker related information is called the default app is tracker capture application. So I'm going to click and open tracker capture. And here you have uh, the Lavo PDR as the uh, country, right? And in that one, we can select different uh, uh, level two and level three units. And finally, I will select a health institute, CHW uh, Mahasot, which is there in the level four. And once I do that, here, I'll be able to see the different health programs that Saurabh mentioned to you in his uh, initial presentation, right? So we have the COVID-19 vaccination registry, case-based surveillance and contact registration and follow-up. So these are three different programs. So what do we mean by a program? So basically program includes a workflow of information we want to capture in the DHIS2 tracker, right? So it's a, it's a very overarching thing. It's a workflow. So inside the program, you have it in such a structured way where it, how it can kind of match to your own use case. So I'll come back to the components within a program a bit later, but here what I want to demonstrate to you is the connection between uh, the track entity and the program, right? So what we do is like from here, I can uh, select this second one called case-based surveillance. That's a program and I have the OAK unit and now I'm going to register a person into this case-based surveillance program, right? So I click on this register button and here it is asking some information. So it, here we are seeing the enrollment, right? So as I mentioned to you before, it uh, mentions here the case registration date, which is the default enrollment date. So I can keep the date as today, which is 25th, or even I can, uh, into the previous day. Say, for example, yesterday, uh, 24th of October. And under the profile, we have different attributes, right? These are the properties of the person that we have to capture uh, when we are doing the enrollment or initial registration. 
So not all of them are mandatory, but you can even make them mandatory. It is asking for a point on the map, right? So for example, if you know the person's location, we can click on this button here and in the map, we can, uh, mention, we can capture that, right? But if you don't know that, we can leave it blank and we can put a case uh, ID like this. First name, I will put uh, test person. And the surname I will put, just put last name, and the date of birth, we can probably mention a date of birth like this and age will be captured and the gender, right, home address. So I'm, uh, because this, this is just for the demonstration purpose, I'm not going to uh, complete all of them. But finally, after doing all these things, you can click save and continue. So this is the point at which we register a tracked entity instance name, test first name into the system. And at the same time, we are doing something else, which is enrolling this person test first name into case-based surveillance program. Let me repeat myself. So here, what we are doing is registering a track entity instance and enrolling that person to the case-based surveillance program. So we are doing two steps at one go in this initial step. Right? I have to click on save and continue, and that's when um, this process will be completed. I will stop sharing and going back to my presentation. Any questions up to this point? If not, I will proceed and probably we can take a few more examples towards the end. Right. I have already mentioned to you what a program is, but the, but the definition is like, it's a sequence of events that an entity can go through the frame, okay? So basically this frame can be a disease surveillance program, which will include clinical examination, specimen tracking, lab results, and case investigation. For example, this COVID-19 surveillance program will include uh, a diagnosis and clinical examination, uh, specimen tracking, lab results, and case investigation, right? And then what attributes are required when an entity joins the program? So it's basically program, as I mentioned to you, is an overarching thing where you have a frame or series of events a track entity instance can go through. And also, it also includes specific attributes which are required when the track entity joins the program. Okay. So there is another concept called track entity attributes and program attributes, which are kind of a very, uh, a bit advanced concept, which I will not mention here, but probably towards the latter part of this uh, tracker program or, or the tracker academy, we'll be able to discuss more about it, right? So basically that's, where, that's why we have mentioned attributes are also part of the program when the track entity instance is joining the program. Okay, is that clear? Let's see some examples, then uh, it'll be more clear to you. Are there any questions on chat? No, right. So inside a program, we have a few more concepts, right? The first one is called program stage. So what do we mean by program stage? So forgetting about the definition, if you just look at the name program stage, so that itself mean like this has something to do with part of the program. So the definition is a tracker program basically can have uh, multiple program stages. So inside the program, I, I mentioned to you, program is the information work, workflow or the frame. So if we can divide this entire information workflow or the frame into multiple components, right? So that's why tracker program can have multiple program stages, right? So it is not compulsory for a tracker program to have more than one program stages, but it needs to have at least one program stage. 
So basically program stage defines what data should be collected during a specific type of event within the program. The keyword here is during a specific type of event. So if you go back to the uh, reference to the program, we mentioned within a program, I mean, let's take this uh, disease surveillance program. It will include clinical examination, specimen tracking, lab results, and case investigation, right? So like each of these four concepts are different types of events within a, a one big program. So what we mean by a stage is one, if one type of event within a program. So here, if we apply this concept to the, to the use case, lab results stage will collect information about a results event. So inside this disease surveillance program, you can have different stages. For example, clinical examination may be one stage, specimen tracking may be another stage, and lab results as well as case investigations can also be different stages. So inside the COVID-19 surveillance program, as per this example, we can have four different stages. But mind you, there are no hard and fast rules as to how you define your program. Uh, I mean, it's up to you and your program managers to design how good our tracker uh, concepts to be matched with your program. So for example, even though we see there are four different stages that we can break this entire program into, you might feel, no, we don't need four, we can do it with three. You can argue based on uh, your own rationalization. So that's that's totally up to you. But as conceptual level, this is what we mean by program stages. Any questions? Yes, Amit. Uh, you're asking, will we call all the components as frame or each component a different frame? Right. So here, uh, I mean, as per this definition, right? We refer to the, I mean, what we mean by the frame is the entire program. But then, like within the frame, you can have subframes, right? So the, you have this broad frame called program, and it can be further divided into stages, right? And inside the stages, we have different different events. So I will, I will, I mean, I, I think I'll be able to explain this more clearly to you. We have a diagram that is coming up in next few slides. So with that, I will I will get back to your question. So just remember, we are talking about one big thing called program, which can be further subdivided. As, as for now, uh, I will get back to your question. Right. Next, we have a concept called event. So what do we mean by event? Event uh, is something, I mean, within the program stages, the program stages consist of one or more events. So I mentioned to you in the previous slide about something called program stage, right? So program stage is a very generic thing. Say for example, uh, uh, laboratory result or laboratory sample is one program, about one program stage. And inside that one, you can have multiple events, right? So why you can have multiple events is because uh, Say for example, specimen collection stage, you may collect multiple specimens. You might collect a blood sample for a food blood count. Then you might collect a blood sample for uh, like say, yeah, what else? You can collect a blood sample for a, for a particular antibody testing. You may even collect a urine sample. You can, uh, for this uh, COVID surveillance, you might take a, a nasal swab, right? For PCR testing. So likewise, you can have multiple encounters for each of these stages, and we refer to them as events. So basically, event is a one instance of a program stage. So you have this program, you have the program stage, and one instance within the program stage is known as an event, right? So another concept I have to mention is, you can have one event within a program, or you may have multiple events within a program. So based on that, we define the program stage, sorry, uh, let me correct myself. You can have one event within a program stage or you may have multiple events within a program stage. So based on that, we, we can further categorize program stages as repeatable program stages 
or non-repeatable program stages. So if your program stage, say for example, in this COVID scenario, the registration stage, if it is only once we are registering that page person and if we collect some basic information related to the registration, if we do it only once, there'll be only one encounter for that program stage. So we may refer to that program stage as a non-repeatable one. Whereas specimen collection, if you are uh, collecting multiple specimen in multiple encounters, then you may uh, refer to this program stage as a repeatable, right? Is that clear? Any questions? Right, so let's quickly go back to our tracker program and try to under, uh, understand this program, program stages and events a bit more. Right, so you may remember that I click, uh, uh, what I did was in, in my previous uh, demonstration, I registered a new person into the COVID surveillance program and I entered the attributes, right? The profile information. And finally I clicked on save and continue. And when I do that, this is where I land. And this uh, UI or, this, or the screen that, we, that I am right now is, uh, is referred to as tracked entity dashboard. So we will get back to it uh, in more detail when we are doing when we are introducing you to the uh, uh, tracker capture application. But just know that this is a track entity dashboard which has so many widgets. But what I will only focus in this uh, example is this screen, right? Where we can collect uh, the information, right? So, okay, I am having some caching related issue. Are there any questions up to this point? Right, here we go. Okay. Now, if we focus on this timeline data entry, we will explain to you all these components in, in our, uh, our later presentations. But here you will see, this box, the yellow color one is called stage one, clinical examination and diagnosis. So basically within our workflow, we have created a separate stage to collect information related to clinical examination and diagnosis, right? So here you have all this information, right? Basically these are data elements that we are collecting the information grouped under this program stage, right? And other than that, we can have multiple program stages, as I mentioned to you before. So this you, you see is the clinical examination and diagnosis. And to create more program stages and capture more information uh, for this patient, we can click on this plus button. And when we do that, you will see that it only allows me to create or, uh, or capture information for the next three program stages. It, not, it does not let me capture data for the stage one again. Why? Because that's how we have defined. For data to be collected only once for the stage one. So that way the stage one becomes non-repeatable. If, if it was repeatable, it would have appeared here, but it does not. But let me just select this stage two and click save and see what happens. So the stage two is about laboratory requests, right? And here it does some information like say, for example, reason, uh, I can select something and the type of, um, so let me take serum, right? And the date I will put today. Then the type of test, I will just select serology and I click on complete. Right. So let's see what happens if I want to add 
and at the, at the uh, event again, it still shows me the stage two here. Meaning for stage two, for, that, for this person, I can create multiple instances for this stage, right? Meaning stage two is repeatable because lab obtaining lab requests, you may, you may be able to repeat it for multiple times for different type of program, uh, different type of specimens, as well as different types of tests. That's why it is multiple. Whereas this clinical examination and uh, the, the, the history and the diagnosis, that part, we are collecting some information which we don't want to collect over and over again as per this uh, customization. But for your instance, if you feel like you have some information that you may, need it, you may be needing to collect over and over again, you can make this repeatable. Right. Is that clear? So I just wanted to highlight you from this demonstration, the differences between different stages and the concept of repeatable and non-repeatable. I hope this is clear. So let me go back. Right. This is something which you already know, the data elements, options, and option sets, right? So if you are coming from an aggregate background in DHIS2, if you have followed the aggregate-related uh, uh, academies, and uh, uh, if you have practiced DHIS2 aggregate in your routine work, you may be already familiar that we have something called data elements to which we can attach option sets and options. But only difference here in this tracker domain is that when we are creating a data element, the domain type has to be tracker. Right? So what we mean by data elements is the data points that, that are collected within a program stage. Right? So for example, we have this program stage called lab test result. And inside that, the data po points or the different fields, the variables we are capturing under that stage is known as data elements. And mind you, when you are defining a data element for the tracker, it has to be in the domain type tracker, not aggregate. And option sets and options are, are, are kind of, a, I mean, these are two concepts which goes together. So option set is a predefined related list of values for each of the data elements, right? So each data element can only be assigned one option set. Please remember that. For one data element, you can only assign one option set. And options are the individual options or individual um, labels or values that you can uh, create within an option set, right? This is, uh, uh, this you can think of uh, in a multiple choice question, the individual options you have per question, are what we mean by options within option set, right? So what we can actually do is we, so for example, let's take, uh, 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 I mean, the very, uh, the example that we saw just a while ago, the specimen type could be a data element, right? Which can include multiple specimens. So what we are going to do is we will create something called an option set as specimen type in that, we can have multiple options. So for example, serum, nasopharyngeal, right? Could be different options within that option sets of specimen type, right? So this specimen type option set, we can attach it to a data element, to a data element, and that's how all these are integrated. Right? So this is, a, this is again a very abstract thing. Let me go, uh, I mean like, Take one example, then ex then kind of uh, explain to you this entire workflow. Any questions? Yeah, I'm seeing some questions. Okay, uh, there are questions about antenatal care, right? And then uh, defining data element type. Okay, so uh, Amit, in antenatal care. So it's like this. Now, within antenatal care, we can have a broader. So, okay, let's do like this. Uh, let's discuss further about this antenatal. So, we can take this antenatal care 
as an example and let's discuss how we can create the tracker program so let me finish this the next slide and then uh, let's take this example and so probably you'll be able to uh, uh, talk about how you envision this antenatal care program and let's try to build a tracker on top of this use case we'll do like that and then poll defining data element types is done in configuration so users do not have to think about this yes exactly Defining data element types and even designing the tracker program is done in configuration. So the end users do not have to worry at all about this. But why I'm referring to this, I mean, why we are having this lecture, this component uh, within the Tracker Use Academy is for you to give an idea about the building blocks of Tracker. But ideally, if you are an implementer or if you are a person who uses data and not a person who configures your DHS to instance, you don't have to worry about configuring these things. But if you are going to teach Tracker to an uh, end user as an implementer, then you will have to be thorough about these different uh, building blocks of Tracker. Right, so Saurabh has explained, can we use standard terminology? Can we use standard terminology in data element? Um, I'm not entirely sure about what you mean by can we use standard terminology in data element? If you can be more specific. All right. So, like SNOMED CT, uh, okay, you mean like uh, if you want to collect a particular code, right? Uh, for a data element. Yes, that is possible. But then again, you what you have to define is you will have to have uh, option sets configured in such a way that uh, the particular term that you want to capture as the final uh, uh, variable, right? That, we, that you will have to define as option sets prior and then attach it to a data element. That's how you are doing it. Yes, correct. Right. So um, this we have already done. So let's look at the flow summary of the entire thing that we have mentioned so far. Right. So we have this, uh, as mentioned is in this first uh, box, we have something called track entity, right, and which has its own attributes. And then what we do is we are enrolling that track entity into programs. So example of program could be maternal health, child care program, HIV program, and uh, baby surveillance program, right? So we do something called enrollment track entity into the program, right? And then uh, this track entity could be enrolled only once or many times, right? Just mind you, because the thing is like, for example, uh, if we consider about, uh, say, an infectious disease, you might be enrolled, say, even COVID-19, right? COVID-19 surveillance, you might be enrolled once into the COVID-19 and then you may get cured, but you can get a recurrence of COVID-19. You, you can get infected again with COVID-19, then you will have to re-enroll that person uh, with a different enrollment to the program. So you can have one or multiple enrollments um, to the program in a lifetime of a tracked entity. And within the program, you have something called program stages. So for example, um, uh, you can have maternal health, right? In mat I mean, like in each of these programs, like for ANC, uh, so if you take the maternal health program, you can have antenatal care, delivery, postnatal care as different program stages. So this again is uh, uh, about what you mentioned, Amit. So in, in the, um, within the maternal health program, you may have different uh, program stages. So some program stages, some they, we might be able to collect some information about antenatal care, right? So they, that you can have, you can, uh, you know, like include all these data elements inside the ANC or antenatal care program stage, right? And then you have a delivery program stage and you have a, pro, uh, a postnatal care program stage, right? And collect the information inside that. So uh, going back to Amit's example, you can have a repeatable ANC program where you are uh, a program stage where you are collecting the same data elements multiple times. But then again, somebody else might argue within the antenatal care, we might have we might configure it differently where we capture only the data elements which are only collected once, right? As a non-repeatable stage, and then you will you may have a follow-up stage where you are collecting. Uh, repeatable information, right? So you have different ways of arguing. And similarly, you can do uh, same with other programs like uh, HIV, 
right, where you have HIV testing, counseling, ARTS, different program stages. Uh, we have any questions? Right, so this is in summary what happens when you are configuring DHIS2 tracker, right? So this is the tracker data model. So let's quickly go through the model. I will start with track entity. So for example, if we have a track entity called person, the person ca can have different attributes. For example, it can, he can have first name, last name, and a sex, right? And this track entity can be enrolled into one or more program. So as per this, we can, in, if we have a program called COVID-19 surveillance, we can enroll this person to the COVID-19 surveillance program, right? So that's the first section in the tracker data model. The next is about the program and the building blocks within the program. So for example, we have the COVID-19 surveillance program, which can have multiple program stages. So for example, we can have a program stage called clinical examination, lab request, lab result, and the outcome, right? So uh, an instance of this program stage is referred to as an event. So basically that is an encounter of this person with this program stage. So these program stages could be repeatable or non-repeatable. So as per this example, clinical examination is something which is not repeatable, okay? And then you might also have a lab request where you may take a request multiple times, right? And for those, you might have multiple lab results. So these are repeatable. And then you can have something called outcome, uh, which is again a non-repeatable because the outcome only comes one for that enroll. So for each of these program stages, you have a range of data elements that you can incorporate. So if we take, for example, uh, the, labo, uh, the laboratory request program stage, it can have multiple data elements. So one data element could be lab test reason, another data element could be type of test, and the other could be type of the specimen. So some of these data elements will have raw value. Say for example, if it is configured as a, as a, a, a zero positive integer data type, right? Say for example, now let's take this lab test reason. It could be of data element type text, right? So uh, we don't need to attach any, like unless you want to categorize it, we will not attach option set. But like say for example, type of test, you may have a predefined list of responses, which you can incorporate to option set, right? Which can further be elaborated or included as options, right? So you might have a, a, the, the type, type of test as, uh, uh, I mean, the options you can have uh, for type of test could be serology, right? PCR, NAAT, right? likewise. And then this option set, we can bind to the data element that we are doing when we are configured. Is that clear? So this is kind of the overview or summary of the tracker data model. Right. Um, so are there any questions? These are a few examples uh, that we can take when we are uh, like applying the tracker. So for example, uh, we can apply it to pregnant women through ANC delivery and postnatal care. We can uh, think of child through a full set of immunization services, right? Or as patients receiving the um, antiretroviral th treatment therapy, and then TB patient diagnosis and receiving TB treatment, disease surveillance, malaria case investigation, et cetera. So these are the examples. Right. Are there any questions? Um, we are a little bit over time. So uh, probably like uh, if you want to leave, if you have others, other commitments, you may leave now. But uh, if, you, if you need to ask questions, I can elaborate it further with few examples. 
Uh, Saurabh, before we wind up uh, and then go for the Q&A session, uh, do we have any, any announcements to make? No specific announcement, more just everyone, please mark your attendance. And uh, uh, Pamut, if you can just guide them to the feedback section on Moodle so that they can add the feedback for the day. That's important for us to plan the next day and of course the future academy. So these two points. Yes, uh, let me share my screen again. Right. So, yeah. Right. So, going back to Moodle for the day one. Right. Uh, we want all of you to mark your attendance because attendance is uh, compulsory to be marked. So, we, I hope you have done it. And we have this uh, section called feedback. So, go to feedback and click on feedback day one, right? This is where you can give feedback. You just have to uh, select an option for most of the questions asked. And then for some of them, you can uh, give some text, right? And then click on send. This is a simple Google for Google form you have. So it's quite straightforward. And please mark your feedback. So, uh, yeah, uh, the attendance word you have to type uh, under the, so let me share my screen again. I'm not sure whether it will allow me to mark it because I must have already done it during the demonstration. So this is where you have to click attendance, right? And go to day one attendance. I have already done it. So there, uh, you have an option here to, uh, unfortunately I'm not able to show it, uh, you have to click here, the attempt one, and then there you will, you will find the input box where you can type in the copy shield and then click uh, submit. I'm not able to show it because I already demonstrated it once. Right, so uh, those of you who want to, uh, I'll be like, uh, now we can have a Q&A session. Like if you want me to further elaborate on the tracker data model with examples, I can do that. Uh, or else we can wind up for the day. And the learning management, okay, already answered. It's on Moodle. Right. Uh, those of you who want me to further elaborate on the tracker data model, I can do it here uh, with this example. Are there any questions? Uh, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Hello, Pamut. Yes, Arif. I have a question. <laughs> it might be uh, at some level. Is it possible yeah, to please go hide or close the program states based on based on the predefined logic? For the, for example, if a woman uh, only visit uh, for ANC but did not visit for others, PN uh, ANC two, three, or four. And also uh, he, he sorry, uh, sorry, Arif, could you could you please repeat? Um, I, it was not clear. Uh, is it possible to conditionally open or close program stages? Drop level. My question is. So your question is: uh, Is it possible to open or close program stages? Right. Yeah, conditionally. Yes. Based on some okay. Right. So, uh, uh, if you can just mention, like, okay, now we have several ways of doing that, not really like opening or close. So, what you want to do is like uh, 
so basically like uh, is it for people who have so if you can kind of explain a scenario then that would be kind of easy for me now for example a woman uh, visit a place for anc1 but he did not visit for others uh, anc2 3 or 4 but he already um, outcome already occurred so uh, in this scenario it is possible to close money uh, to keep uh, system uh, any possibility to close the 2 3 4 uh, for this particular woman he did not uh, already he uh, stay already passed the 40 uh, 40 weeks so he did not uh, and uh, data entry operator cannot enter the uh, anc2 3 or 4 if i have a program stage anc1 2 3 and 4 he only visit if a Woman visit for only um, NC one, but uh, she did not visit for two, three, or four. So if a data entry operator mistakenly um, uh, entered for this woman uh, for NC visit two, three, or four, but this particular woman is not those uh, those women women who receive only the NC one. So it is in this condition, it is possible to automatically close. Uh, ANC two, three, four stages for the uh, for this particular. All right, interesting. So, yeah, so so I am understanding like um, uh, you have some requirements. So let's make it more generic. It's just that uh, so we have this uh, program stages configured where you want uh, a track entity instance to go through all the four program stages. But uh, what you want to do is not to let uh, uh, they register for, for a given program stage and only let them uh, uh, I mean, enter data into one or two program stages based on a criteria, something like that. Is that so? I hope so. Sorry, <laughs> my network was not. Don't understand. I cannot hear it properly. Uh, right. Okay. So uh, I mean, like, uh, sorry. Probably I, I use. I mean, like, uh, Saurabh, did you get the question correct? Uh, um, okay. Let, let me like mention. So one thing is we'll be discussing about different controls we have uh, around creating, uh, uh, you know, like uh, the the workflows. Uh, pro but but only issue is we might not go into depths because this is not the tracker configuration academy. But we have several ways of doing that. So, for example, one thing is the sharing settings based on which we can, you know, like, uh, um, uh, but I don't think for your example, this is applicable. The sharing settings is like if you want to limit the visibility or access to a program stage for a given user, we can use program settings. But in your case, you want to create a, a new event based on a given criteria on a different program stage. So I think this is like uh, um, this is a bit of a tricky scenario because like uh, in a generic way to create a program stage on this so it's a, it's a kind of a program rule where to create a program stage so this may be a bit of a tricky thing which is not directly supported but uh, probably I can have a chat with you in detail to see the exact requirement so this is something which has to be done through a program rule. I, I, as I feel, but again, uh, I'm not sure whether your requirement will be fulfilled because it's about creating a program rule on a particular program stage. So let me get back to you on this. Probably I can have a chat with you about what your exact requirement is. Saurabh, you have anything to add on this? Uh, no, I think uh, if you can send us a, a small description on Slack, then maybe we could help them better. and. Uh, I think it has to do with the uh, closing program stage data entry or hiding program stages if that particular stage is no longer applicable. So, for example, if if uh, the female has visited in her third trimester for the first time for antenatal care, then all those stages are not applicable for her, right? Like the first visit or the second, third, maybe the the third trimester she's taking her first ever ANC interaction. So in that case, can we hide or close or not allow data entry for the uh, stages which are defined as per the workflow? So maybe we could do something with the program rules or, or, or such, but then uh, if, if Arif can some, give a small description to us on Slack, then we can help him better.
Are there any more questions? Yeah, okay, if not, uh, we can conclude the session. Please uh, uh, make sure that you uh, mark your attendance and give feedback for today's session. If there are any questions, please uh, type them in Slack uh, so that uh, we can, uh, you know, uh, help you out uh, uh, today or in, in, in during the academy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right, uh, so looks like there are no more questions. Uh, so please reach us uh, if you have any queries on Slack uh, or else we will uh, close the live session for today. Hoping to see you all at the uh, same time as today, tomorrow, which is 12 noon in their standard time. Have a great day, bye.